I don't even know if I need to preach this morning after hearing Greg and Kiana. It was amazing. Thank you. Hello, friends. Let us pray. Let us be still. Creator God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This week, I've carried a lot of anger in my heart. I struggled to write this sermon knowing that my head was in a dark place that my heart was far from the love I ought to represent as a man of faith and a follower of Christ. In a few days, I will teach my first solo course at Loyola University in Christian ethics. I have to teach from behind a mask as the nation struggles to care for one another. I did what I was supposed to do. I socially distanced, losing touch with friends and working in isolation. I took the shots with the hope that the world would open back up. I did what I was supposed to do, only to have my hopes delayed through a mix of conspiracy theories and selfishness. I find it hard to find the empathy in my heart for those deceived and led astray. On the news, I watched young men die as they attempted to cling to the wheel wells of American airplanes leaving Afghanistan. One young man who died left a letter to his family. I have to try, it said. He knew that his existence as a young gay man would no longer be tolerated as his country relapsed into tyranny. I can only imagine the desperation and horror of that moment. It makes me angry that two decades of murder, war, and occupation have resulted in a rejuvenation of old enmities and a return of repressive regime to power. I won't pretend to have the answers, but I can say that as we approach the anniversary of 9-11, I find it hard to find room in my heart for hope or forgiveness. Yesterday, I read of a school district in Waukesha, Wisconsin, that has turned down the universal free lunch program offered by the Biden administration. The district's leads Reasoning was that allowing children access to free food in school would spoil them. For me, this story stirs up memories of my own youth where we just didn't have enough to eat. The memory of the time I lost my booklet containing the lunch stamps I had to use in front of my friends. The embarrassment of difference, of poverty, and of abject need. I imagine all of those children who will have to sit in class in pain as their stomachs growl. And now I imagine what their parents must feel as they think of their children suffering needlessly. Only someone who has never suffered hunger could imagine that a meal could spoil a child. To be honest, my heart and mind have been unable to find the charity and grace needed to view the Waukesha administrators as humans in need of love, correction, and patience. In fact, I had planned this morning to enter into the pulpit and rail against the evil I was seeing in the world. I felt it my place to point out the hypocrisy of claiming freedom and illness, victory amid tragedy, and compassion in the face of want. 
But as I revisited today's lectionary reading, I was struck by a different reading of the text. Jesus said, you abandon the commandment of God and hold the human tradition. Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile for is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. What we say and preach, what we accuse the world of, what is the purpose of the gospel if not to turn hypocrisy and anger to God's will? What is my intention as I speak this morning, if not to bring hope through the revelation of Jesus' life and mission? The commandment of God is wholly different from the traditions of humanity mired in domination, avarice, and the glorification of self. God commands us to love because it is love that brings our hearts close to the divine and allows us to hope in a world that can seem hopeless. Our scripture today is a selection from the Gospel of Mark, the seventh chapter. In Mark's narrative, Jesus is at the height of his works on earth. Jesus has fed 5,000 people with only five fish and two loaves. His compassion bringing about the nourishing of scores of people who had come to worship. Jesus had walked on water and healed in miraculous ways. After today's selection, Jesus would cast out the demon from the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, allow the deaf to hear, and feed another 4,000 people just for good measure. It's telling that Mark takes the time in this narrative to show Jesus challenging the traditions which had shaped his life and mission. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, what do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Were the intentions of the Pharisees and scribes to protect the health of Jesus' followers? Or were they pointing out the uncleanliness of the disciples in order to cast their beliefs and faith into doubt? The defilement of their hands was understood to reflect their desecration of tradition of the precepts and laws which had carried the Hebrews out of bondage and into their own land. Unclean eating, and by extension, the assertion that the miraculous power of Jesus was emanating directly from God, not only flew in the face of tradition, but also challenged the power structures and justifications based in that tradition. In the turn toward the preservation of self and tradition, Jesus claims that the primary commandment of God is being abandoned to love God and one neighbor, one's neighbor as oneself. As Christians, we are called to approach the world in a way that challenges the traditions which have shaped us and in many cases driven us from the commandments which define our faith. It is important that our critiques and rebukes come from the intention to save rather than to shame. I've been following closely the conversation surrounding the use of ivermectin to combat the effects of COVID-19 in lieu of taking the available vaccines. Ivermectin is a anti-parasitic, which has been prescribed for years to treat parasites in humans and livestock. It is not approved for the treatment of or prevention of coronaviruses such as COVID-19. But in the face of increasing numbers of infections, and conspiracies involving the development and purpose of vaccines, 
A large number of our fellow Americans have been driven to use ivermectin in ways that are harmful and in some cases deadly. The run on iver ivermectin has been so extreme that there is now a nationwide shortage. People desperate for the drug have been driven to feed stores to get ivermectin intended for livestock, such as cows, horses, and pigs, or to the black market via the internet and unscrupulous dealers. A great deal of my sermon this morning was intended to examine this phenomenon, to point out the harm it is causing and the drive to protect oneself in the face of data, facts, and compassion. But as Jesus said, there's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. My intentions were to vent my own frustrations, my anger at the rejection of the God grace gift of scientific advancement is justified, but Jesus calls us to place our hearts with God and allow compassion to guide our anger, not frustration. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Of course, washing your hands before a meal is the correct action. It's kind of gross that they were just eating with dirty hands in the middle of the desert. But the admon admonition and instruction must come from a place of love in order to avoid reifying evil. No, you should not take medication intended for livestock for a disease unrelated to the current epi epidemic. Not because it means that I will continue to be inconvenienced by teaching in a mask, but because you could seriously poison yourself and it is important to God that you survive. A few days ago, the Pope tweeted, and yes, I'm citing a tweet in my sermon. The Pope quoted Augustine and wrote, I fear that Jesus will pass me by unnoticed. It is important to remain watchful because one great mistake in life is to get absorbed in a thousand things and not to notice God. Their hearts are far from me. Jesus goes unnoticed when we fail to remain watchful, not to the sins of the world, but of our own intentions and how our love inhabits the will of God. Give me a clean heart to see you like I should, to walk the path that's right. I thank God that my heart was swayed from hypocrisy this morning, that I was able to read today's scripture with new eyes and a renewed understanding. Every day our hearts are created to be reunited with God in love. Even on those days when it is difficult to notice the presence of love in our lives, it is always there. I'll say that one more time. <laughs> Every day our hearts are created to be reunited with God in love. Even on those days when it is difficult to notice the presence of love in our lives, God's grace is always there. Itinerarium mentis in diem, the journey of the mind, the heart, the soul into God. Bonaventure wrote of the process of life as finding the path back to integration with the divine source of the universe. The pains and pitfalls of life are the result of humanity's disintegration with the creative source of all that is. For Bonaventure, the meaning of life is bound up not so much in action, but in the intentionality of those actions. In this way, milking a cow, tilling a field, reciting matins daily, or merely taking the time to notice the beauty of the world and the movement of God within our lives can all be steps on the path back to God. Life itself is an exercise in noticing the presence of Jesus as the Christ in a world often hostile to our intent, attention to the reality of hope in the darkness. If there is one takeaway from this sermon I want you to carry with you, it is this hope. The reality of God underlying the seeming darkness of the world Itinerarium mentis in diem. 
when we have the intention of seeing the world as ultimately belonging and existing within God, we will notice that our hearts are always close to love which saves, the love that created the universe and that preserves us when we feel far from the grace of God. Take time to remember the controversial, the challenging Jesus. There's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. During our time this morning, I hope you have noticed that I haven't dwelt on the list of transgressions listed by Jesus in this text. Our translation of the scriptures often lack the context to properly define, but triggering words like fornication or licentiousness meant in the original language. And so we have difficulty correctly applying these contexts to our daily lives. Liz and Han have, both in their preaching and Bible studies, Thursday at 6 p.m., by the way, pointed out how misinterpreting or even willfully misunderstanding words in their context can lead to great harm when we attempt to apply biblical understandings to our daily lives. What's important to understand in today's text is that Jesus is saying that no action is inherently evil, that many traditional understandings of what it means to be holy in the eyes of God have focused on what we do. Jesus reminds us to focus on the love which always ought to direct our actions. With love, every move we make, every action we take in this world is a journey back to God. Evil is not a thing out there. It comes from within when we fail to attend to the love of God which exists within all created beings. For all of us were made in love and with the intention of union with the divine. It is the destiny of all humanity for our hearts to be made close to God. I don't want to take up too much more of your time this morning, but I have an important assignment that I'm leaving you with this week. I want you to seek out those people in your lives who are vaccine hesitant. Approach them with love in your heart, whether it is to admonish or persuade, and set your intentions on the grace given to all of us as we make our way toward the path of empathy, generosity, and care. I want you to read the stories of Afghan refugees and find ways to help in their struggles simply to exist in their full humanity. The grace that Christians exude will become more and more necessary as vengeance begins to control the action of our government and begins to take root in our hearts. Wherever evil begins to take root, it is our place to resist with loving kindness as the root of all our actions. I want you to notice the hunger in our own community, to make note of it and reflect on ways to mitigate the suffering of others. Remember that grace and kindness aren't earned but owed to each according to their need. I am tasking all of us with noticing the presence of God seeking us in these trying times. Our intentions bring our hearts in alignment with God. Imagine what we can do if only we remain present to the reality of Jesus as the Christ in the midst of our struggles to reject the human tradition of basing our actions in the intentionality of retribution and domination. Lord, we thy presence seek. May ours this blessing be. Give us a pure and lowly heart, a temple meet for thee. Every day, set your heart to seek God, to seek the grace which pervades the world and brings light to the dimmest corners. And always set your intentions to reflect that light to others in their need and in their hopes. Bring your hearts close to Jesus. Amen. Amen.